You are welcome to my channel once again And you are welcome to the life with Mokes Yes Welcome back to my YouTube channel I'm so excited to have you here once again The support has been so overwhelming Thank you for subscribing Thank you for sharing my video Thank you for commenting And just thank you for being a part of this I'm going to be talking about something that is pretty interesting. The topic might have been overflogged, but I just want to give you my perspective. And who knows, maybe one or two people might learn from this. So let's dive right into it. So today we will be talking about enjoying your singleness. Like I said before, lots of people have spoken about this, but I want to talk about my experience. So when I was younger, I didn't like to be single. I didn't enjoy being single. Right. So I wasn't in a lot of committed relationships. Right. Um, I would say I probably had like two or three serious relationships. But um, when I wasn't in a relationship, I always felt the need to have someone I was talking to. So even if I wasn't committed to the person, I just needed them, you know, by my side. As far OK, let's just talk. Let's just just because I didn't I just didn't want to be lonely or feel like ah, I'm alone. Nobody likes me. I liked the attention. And it took me a while to actually find out that. That was a very, very serious problem. And, you know, it took the Holy Spirit to take me down to explain to me that, you know what? Um, you need to learn to be whole in me. You need to learn to be complete in me. Because I was looking for something that God could give in men, basically. So not sex or not anything perverse in that in that manner, but it, it was more of attention. You know, I was looking for someone to tell me in the morning, good morning, I love you, you know, how was your night? And I just wanted that attention. So I was constantly always in a thing with one person or the other. And of course, like, you know, when I started growing in Christ, I realized that, okay, you need to take take the back seat and sit down and understand why you constantly have to be with a guy or have a thing with a guy. Like, what's the problem with being single? And this is something that a lot of us can actually relate to. So sometimes you get into a relationship, not necessarily because you like the person or you have the same values or it's an intentional relationship that's going to lead to marriage. But because, well, you know... I just don't want to be single. I just don't want to be alone on vows day. I need somebody to shower me gifts. I need someone to give me the attention. So we just end up going for any and everything, even if the person doesn't have the same values as you do, even if you know the person is disrespecting you, just because you want to be in a relationship by fire, by force, right? And it even gets worse because when we go old, get older, rather, you know, especially for women, when you get into your mid twenties, so at 23, 24, you're probably like, okay, I still have some time, right? Um, no pressure. Everybody's chill. Yeah, you know, I can date a few people. And if it doesn't work out, I still have some time, right? 25, 26, you're like, ah, okay, well, what's happening? The Lord. <laughs> Send me my man. Send me the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. At 27, 28, you're like, ah. Man, more not die this tra tra tra. Uh, by fire, by force, I must to marry. 29, 30. Yeah, I'm going to die lonely and sad. All my mates are married with two kids, right? And even if you don't say this, that's kind of how our mind actually, um, you know, goes. Or that's the, the narrative that plays in our minds, right? So because of the timeline that has been set by the society mysteriously, we shall will be jumping from one relationship to the other. From one person to the other until finally somebody proposes and you know we have this grand wedding ceremony and everybody's like wow ben and Nigeria even carried it it's on all the magazines and we're feeling so fly with ourselves and at the end of the day i'm asking myself that you know is that the aim to get married at all cost you know i tell people i haven't been married for so long but i tell people that if you get married to somebody and you get married to the wrong person you would hate your life because sometimes, you know how you go to work and come back and you're just like, ah, oh, I'm going to come home and just like have dinner, probably just do like a bubble bath, watch Netflix. Imagine coming home and then there's another person in your space that you detest or that detests you. Or, you know, you guys just have a toxic situation going on and you have to live with that for the rest of your life. And what now happens is that people get married six months after you get a divorce, right? 
um, one year after you get a divorce. And I'm not saying this to bash anybody who's been through a divorce. I've not been through one, but I can imagine that it's extremely difficult. You know, it's extremely just very hard because one, you've poured yourself into this person. You've given your hearts, your emotions. You've actually even gone all the way into making commitment in front of God, in front of people, the psychological effects that it will have on your mind. And the fact that in some countries, it's even worse because especially for women, you, you get that stigma and you start thinking about how, oh, you know, some people might not want you because you've been through a divorce. And it's just, it's just so much. It's too much to handle, right? You know, so I said all of that to say that it's better to be single and have peace of mind than to be in a relationship and be suffering, right? Um, because at the end of the day, it's not really about the the fact that you are married it's you know what what does the marriage add to you what value like were you actually a better person when you were single than now that you're married do you, if you know what i mean like are you are you like do you get the support because when you have a companion you know your companion is there to support you to help you fulfill your destiny to help you even like be the best that you can be and you are there to help them as well so in order to enjoy your singleness the first thing is to understand that god has a particular person purpose and calling over your life. God has predestined that this is what you will do. This is what would help you fulfill destiny. Like the Bible says in Jeremiah, it says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I predestined you to be priests unto nations. So basically it says, man, woman, whoever you are, there is a calling that I have over your life and you need to find it. The reason is because if you don't find yourself and you get into a relationship, the person can determine what they think you should be or who they think you should you, you, you should be, right? And we've seen cases where people get into relationships and their partner now starts to di dictate to them and say, don't act this way, act this way. Maybe I'm just generally extroverted. I like to talk. I like to make new friends. And then I get into a relationship with somebody and the person is like, ah, you probably need to tone this down a little. You're too much for me. And you hear statements like that. And then the person is feeling like, oh, you know what? Okay, maybe I'll just turn it down. Maybe I shouldn't talk that much. No, because you have been wonderfully and uniquely made. So everything that makes you you know everything unique about you is what makes you beautiful so that's what i'm saying that in finding yourself god will show you or shine light in those areas of of interest it could be oh you know i just find out that i'm, I'm extroverted so well, like I'm going to do YouTube because I like to talk. I like to make friends or I'm going to be a presenter or it could be, oh, I like to cook. So I'm going to be a caterer. Right. And then imagine that you have a plan for yourself and then you get into a relationship and someone is telling you, oh, don't do this. Don't do that. You tell them, no, this is not what God has called me to be. I know the calling of God over my life and I'm going to pursue it. If you want to come on board, come on board. If not, you can watch, you can jack bar, you can Jack, bah, you understand? So I said all that to say that it's important that you know who you are unless you want people to define who you are for you, unless you want some guy to tell you, okay, this is who you are or some girl to say, this is who you are. If you know who you are, you will be able to stand confidently and say, this is who I am. And so when, you know, whoever you're with is not receptive to that purpose, you can be like, okay, that's fine. No pressure. I'm not even fighting you. You are not here for me or you don't support me. That's okay. I'm moving on and I'm finding the person that God has, you know, brought to me to help fulfill my destiny. Right? The second thing, which is more important, and I feel like a lot of people don't understand, or maybe, maybe we understand it, but we just have not digested it. I don't even know. It's that no relationship can make you happier than you already are. That's the truth. And I know lots of people will say, oh, well, it's because you're married. That's why you're saying this. No, that's not true. I've been in relationships where I felt lonely. I've been in mar my marriage right now. Sometimes I feel lonely, not because my partner isn't there to support me or love me or give me all the attention, but because sometimes they might not just be in the right frame of mind because they are human beings and not every day is a good day. I'll give an example. So let's say I have a very hard day at work, right? And normally, when my partner says that I'm sulking, no, I'm just like having a very like, um, I guess, moody attitude. He'll be like, oh, babe, what's up? Are you okay? Well, let's say he had a hard day too, right? So at that moment, he's feeling like, okay, I'm tired. I can't even, you know, start to talk right now. I just need to breathe. And at that moment, I'm like, oh man, this man, he doesn't even care about me. He doesn't even love me. Like, you know, I'm not even happy in this relationship. No, that's not true. It's because the man that God has placed in your life 
It's not there to take God's place. God is the only one that can fill the void that you fill completely. God is the only one that can meet all our needs. The Bible says in Philippians, it says that what? It says that God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. So that means God will supply our emotional needs, our financial needs, our physical needs. Rise and shine and give all his glory, glory. So God is the only one that can give that to you. So when you are feeling lonely and you've not on you've not come to the realization that joy is a fruit of the spirit like it's not something that someone can give and you go with that mindset my dear you will be what you will be disappointed not once not twice not thrice and that's why people have very unrealistic expectations from their partners because they don't understand this basic fundamental only God can give you joy. Only God can give you, um, you know, complete happiness. Your partner can be there to support you, to love you. And yeah, there's some things that you can do together that can make you happy. But that's not their sole purpose. It's not sustainable. The third thing to note is that your time of singleness is time for character development. This is so very, very important because a lot of times we actually end up doing every other thing aside developing ourselves or trying to improve on ourselves. So for instance, let's say communication issues is what made me leave my first relationship. If I'm not intentional about it, if I'm not like reading or like trying to maybe even go for counseling or trying to address it, if I go to my next relationship, it's not just going to go away automatically. No, I have to actually take time out to deal with those issues. And no matter how much we want to blame the other person, let's say, you know, we go through a breakup. If we look you know, in, on the inside and try to evaluate the situation, we would see that there's some things that we could have done better. For instance, there's some toxic traits that we have that we've acquired maybe because of how we were raised, right? And these things don't just go away. So your time of singleness might be the time for you to actually take time out to deal with them. Do I need to go for therapy? Do I need to go for counseling? What books can I read? If I have like a dismissive avoidant attachment style, how can I deal with this? You know, how, you know, I've seen this pattern over time. How can I be better? Not essentially for another person or to be a better wife, but for yourself. Because when you are whole and complete, you'll be able to give more love. You'll be able to exude more, um, exude more light. You know what I mean? Like we say love and light, but if you don't have that love and light, how are you going to give it? If you don't have that beauty from within, how are you going to give it? So it's very important that we actually take time out to sit down and let the Holy Spirit work in us. Let him help us to break down those walls of... <clears throat> of anger, those walls of, you know, of anxiety or those walls of defense that we've put up over, over the years due to different circumstances. It's important that you know that whatever it is that, str whatever struggle you had before is not going to automatically deal with it unless you are intentional about it. So when you're single, that's the time for you to focus on those things in prayer, in reading books, in counseling, in whatever you need to do. And finally, I want to say to you that when God decides that it is your time nobody can take a, take take that away from you when god says that it is your time that like the bible says he makes everything beautiful in his time it will come naturally the man that god has preserved for you the man that will love you that will respect you that will treat you like a queen that would help you to fulfill your destiny he will find you and it's going to be so seamless of course you need to put in the work but i mean like you wouldn't struggle as much so in the meantime let us enjoy the singleness if you want to take yourself out take yourself out if you want to hang out with your girls do that you don't always have to have somebody on valentine's day you don't always have to have someone in your corner sending you love texts if you want to know what god says about you you want to feel lovely dovey go to corinthians go to ephesians and see what god has to say about you see the love of god let the love of god fill your heart understand the love of god because when you really understand the love of god you would not be searching for love elsewhere because the love of God is so complete that it fills you, it permeates every part of your being. You are so satisfied with his love. You are drenched in his love that his love replaces every other love around you. Of course, 
eventually the man will come but in due time so please don't put yourself under any pressure you are beautiful you are loved you deserve everything good and like i said in the right time god will make all things beautiful in his time thank you so much for watching i really really appreciate the love please turn on the notification bell um, subscribe like share comment share this video because i believe that it will bless you as much as it's blessed me thank you and have a wonderful day have an amazing 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 day